Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with pretty Miss Sheila running that camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Doing a great job as usual. I have to tell you a little story. I know, you probably want to just get right into the recipe, but I need to tell you this because it's so important. Sheila and I were out in Las Vegas. We had a little fun out there doing a little gambling stuff. In fact, I remember walking into a casino, and a guy was coming out. He said, can you loan me $100? My mom's real sick, needs medicine. I said, wait a minute, how do I know if I give you $100, you're not going to run back in and gamble it up? He said, oh no, I got gambling money. Anyway, with that said, we went around and had a great time. We were over at the Rio at their fantastic seafood buffet, but we were also at the Luxor, which is that big pyramid looking place. If you want to go to a great buffet, go in there and go to the bottom level and go down a huge escalator, it goes down about two stories into a buffet that's fantastic. And I'm getting all this stuff, and I went over to get some bread pudding. And it almost looked like loaves of bread lined up in these pans, deep pans. And this bread pudding was yummy and delicious and had cinnamon and vanilla flavor. But most of all, it was kind of a yellow texture to it. I thought, i got to find out what this is because it is absolutely, undoubtedly, the best bread pudding I've ever ate in my entire life. Didn't have any raisins in it either. I don't care for raisins. You can put it in this recipe. That's up to you. So I actually went to the kitchen while Sheila was sitting there waiting at the table and I knocked on the door. I said, can I talk to your pastry chef? They took me in the back and here was this guy sitting there. He was doing some book work or maybe some orders and stuff. And I said, I don't know you, but are you the one who made the bread pudding? And he said, yeah. And he said, yeah, with an accent. He had a German accent that was so strong I could barely understand about half of what he said. But we got to talking, and he finally gave me the recipe. He made a copy of it on his copier, but it was for like 25 gallons of mixture to go in all these pans and everything. So I had to kind of break it down through the years, and I've got a real good resemblance of what that was. And I know this is a kind of a long story, but the key thing, more than anything else, everybody's got all their ingredients that they put in bread pudding, and a lot of them are similar. But one thing I haven't seen on the internet anywhere, but he did, and it was on that buffet, and it was outstanding is he uses potato bread. That's that yellow texture that I seen that was so delicious. Come on over here. We're going to get started on the best Las Vegas bread pudding you ever ate. Check it out. To start out with his recipe, we're going to go ahead and put in three cups of whole milk and one cup of condensed milk. I actually used a can of condensed milk and it's slightly over a cup, but I'm going to pour it in there anyway. I take that back. It's evaporated milk. I'm not going to stop the camera and do it over again, so I'm just going to tell you that's evaporated milk. And I'm just going to put this whisk on about number two to start with. Then I'm going to add six eggs in here. And I'm going to put in a half a cup of melted and then cooled back to room temperature butter because we don't want hot butter to cook the eggs. We're also going to put in one cup of white sugar and one cup of brown sugar. And let me tell you what we do. Sheila goes out here. Where do you go to buy all that stuff? at Sam's and she buys a great big bag of brown sugar then we pack it in one cup portions because a lot of the recipes that we do call for one cup of brown sugar and then I use my vacuum packer to vacuum pack it so it stays nice and soft and pliable and you can see we actually have another video on this channel about that vac pack machine but there goes our one cup of brown sugar in with our one cup of white sugar we're also going to add a half a teaspoon of salt in there. We're going to put in a teaspoon of vanilla. Now remember, I broke down a recipe that makes like 25 gallons, you know. We're going to put in a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And we're going to put in a full teaspoon of cinnamon. But again, remember that was evaporated, or not evaporated, yeah, is it evaporated milk, Sheila? I got to get that right, because I always want to say condensed milk, but it's evaporated milk. And I'm going to let this blend for just a little bit, and we'll be right back with you. 
I like what Sheila did. She put a can up there on the shelf next to me that says evaporated milk on it. So I'll say the right thing. Let me turn this up to four for just a second. And we only been mixing this for about a minute or so. And I think this part of it is done. We're going to move this over. This is our mixture that goes on our potato bread. Now let me tell you about this potato bread. Even though it looks like it's fresh in the loaf, I actually dried it out for about almost a whole day. So it's real dry. And you want me to move this down away, Sheila? Why don't I leave it in the center and let's move the camera over. Okay. I'm going to take my little basting brush and coat this pan with butter. I have no idea what they did with those great big huge cookers or how they cook them in their big convection ovens and all that kind of stuff so we're going to put this in here. Now let me tell you some things that I've noticed when I watched a lot of different bread pudding recipes on YouTube. Almost nobody that I could ever find used egg bread and a lot of them did what absolutely contradicts what my Uncle Bob used to say. My Uncle Bob used to say, if you're going to make a hamburger and you make a big juicy hamburger and you want to put it on a bun, or if you're going to make sloppy joes and put it on a bun, if you don't want your buns to be all mushy, butter the bun before you put it on. It'll keep it from soaking into the bread. But I see so many people on the internet butter the bread on both sides and then put it in their bread pudding. How does the mixture soak in there? It can't. So we're not going to do that. We are not going to butter the bread. Okay, I got the mixture out of my little mixer over there. I'm going to put a layer in here. Get it soaked up pretty good. Then I'm going to put in another layer. And notice I'm not cubing this bread up. I want it to be like a real loaf and I don't have a deep pan to stand it up like a whole loaf like he did. So I'm going, there's that bread tie I was looking for. Good thing that didn't end up in the bread pudding. That's funny. I'm going to put in some more of this mixture on top of here. I'm going to tell you another secret that he does in just a second. And you won't believe it, but this loaf fit just perfect. All of these except for the heels. And I'm going to do something with them in a second too. What I want to do, I'm going to save just a little bit of this in this container. And I'm going to push this down with my little flipper whipper so I can get it soaked in there. And I'm going to do this periodically to make sure it does the right thing. There we go. Now it's starting to soak up through there. But don't butter your bread and then put it in and expect your mixture to soak into your bread. I get the butter thing, but I'm going to move this off to the side for just a second. And I'm going to take these heels, because I hate to throw stuff away. And I'm going to cut these into little teeny pieces. But I hate to waste these heels off the bread, so I'm not going to. I'm going to put them down in all the little cracks. And it will give the top of this a little bit of texture so it doesn't just look like slices of bread. If you want to get a different look, I can understand that as well for presentation. Let me move this over here and get the rest of the rest. There we go. How am I back center again? You are doing good. Am I doing good? Then we're going to pour 
the very last bit of this on here. Now that size pan you could almost add one more cup of milk but I think we're pretty good. With all that sugar in there and all the spices and nutmeg and cinnamon and everything. Now here is the next step that he did with his little broken English of German accent which I got the biggest kick out of. He was so nice to me when I was in there. Is he says you have to put this in the refrigerator overnight. So many people make bread pudding, they pour the mixture over it, then they pop it right into the oven. Don't do that. Set this in the refrigerator overnight. He says, I don't care if you use fresh bread then, it'll soak into every single crack of the bread. So that's what we're going to do. And it'll soak up. I might a couple of times between now and tomorrow put this little flipper on top of these and mash it a few more times to kind of soak it up. I don't want to smash the bread flat but I do want to make sure that it's soaking all the way to the top and I may whip up a little bit more milk and pour on top but I don't think so. I think we're looking absolutely excellent. So let's put this in the refrigerator and we're going to see you tomorrow. Our bread pudding is in the refrigerator made with potato bread soaking up all that vanilla and two types of sugar and cinnamon and nutmeg and goodies it's all in there doing its thing so we're gonna make a little sauce I don't remember sauce on top of that bread pudding out there because it was just so delicious and warm inside I don't remember they might have had something to pour on there but while that's doing that we're gonna make a little sauce and then we're gonna chill it overnight as well but come on over here and we'll make a little topping for our potato bread bread pudding you know the procedure we're going to do right now is almost kind of like making a roux but we're not going to do that but we are going to stir it low and slow with a whisk so let's put in a cup of half and half to start with two eggs beaten I know because Sheila beat them up <laughs> two tablespoons of sugar in here just regular white sugar a half a teaspoon of vanilla and I got one little pat of butter but I'm gonna put that in after this gets going now let me put this on medium high heat just until it starts getting really going then I'm gonna reduce it to medium and I'm gonna stir it constantly so let's get this sauce boy it looks good already and it has even thickened when it cools down it's gonna get just beautiful be back in a little bit after we stir this for a good 15 to 20 minutes. I went from high medium to medium to medium low. I kept turning it down and turning it down and look at this. It almost has like a pudding consistency to it. Just wonderful and I did give it a little taste test off of here. <laughs> wow, as if that ain't good enough. Now we're going to put in a little chunk of butter. Just about that much, however much that is probably like one teaspoon of butter and we're going to stir that in as well and this is right at almost a simmer it's not bubbling because I don't really want it to I just want to purify this so nice this butter in here now you could put a little bourbon in here if you want to make a kind of a bourbon sauce there's a lot of different things you could pour in I kind of thought wouldn't it be neat to pour in a little shot of Bailey's Irish cream. Wouldn't that add a nice flavor to that? I don't know, I haven't even seen that anywhere, but I thought that would be good. Do we have some Bailey's Irish cream, Sheila? I think we do. Well, look what we found. A little shotgun red shot glass, about a third full of Bailey's Irish cream. We did have a little bit on the shelf, so that's going right in there. I turned it up just a click or two to cook away that alcohol in that Bailey's Irish cream. And I think we are done. Let me turn this off and I'm going to keep stirring it as it cools a little bit. Just for about 30 seconds or so. And I got a little glass bowl sitting over here. 
All right, it's time to transfer this into our little dish. And we can set this up here because it don't turn on unless it's magnetic. And there's our little white sauce to go on top of our bread pudding. And I'll tell you something, I did a little taste with a spoon here just a second ago and wow, this stuff is fantastic. I had to do an edit and turn this pan the other way to get the rest of these goodies out of here because all I had was my whisk. I didn't have a spoon and there it is. Voila! This is going to thicken up when we put it in the refrigerator. Then tomorrow when we bake that stuff we'll be able to take a little of that sauce and ladle it over. It's going to be to die for. See you tomorrow. Well, we made all the ingredients. We put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. We put it in the oven. We timed it 350 degrees for 50 minutes. It puffed up this high. I mean, almost five inches above the top of this pan, just domed. So we opened it up the oven, turned it off, and man, it just settled right back down. And when it almost got flush with the top, I grabbed a couple of mitts and I picked it up. And as I took my knee and closed the oven door, I dropped it on the floor. Bam! It hit and I mean bread pudding jumped all over in there and some of it hung up on the sides so it's not perfect like it was when we put it in there but you, you got to see the finished result and I never in my wildest dreams thought because I got the recipe from a master chef at the Luxor in Las Vegas that this breading would be all shook up, uh -huh. <laughs> but it is all shook up, but it's still in there. And the little pieces that I picked up that fell kind of to the side, fabulous. Come on over here and look at this bread pudding that we salvaged. It didn't fly out of the pan. It went from waist high, clear down, hit the floor, jumped all over and fell back into the pan. But come take a look. We're the luckiest people in the world. You should have seen how beautiful it is. And you know what? It still looks beautiful to me and it tastes just absolutely fantastic. I'm going to get some of this out of here and put it on this plate. In fact, I'm going to put another little piece kind of from the middle. Just beautiful. Then I'll get another plate over here. This stuff is so delicious, you wouldn't believe. I guess I could let it cool down a little bit more because it hasn't been out of the oven, but no more than just a little bit. So I, if I let it cool, it would probably cut better. But this stuff right here is the best. This sauce that I made is so good. I'll get over here and drizzle a little bit. Let me do another one. Can you believe that, Sheila? <laughs> After all that time and all that baking time and everything, drop it on the floor. But I want to give thanks to the man upstairs who must be watching out after our YouTube channel because it didn't fly out of the pan onto the floor. I wasn't going to rebake the whole thing. <laughs> oh, this sauce is so to die for. Let me get my fork over here, Sheila's little baby fork. Yes, my little baby fork. My little baby fork over here. Clean up those pans. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I can't really show the rest of this. I guess I'll just put it in there at an angle of a dangle like that and they can figure it out later. Let me see here. Does it look good, Sheila, on the edge? She's my little director girl. Yes, it looks good. Anything good looks like a wreck. <laughs> Let me straighten this out here. I got to get everything just perfect because you certainly wouldn't want to drop this on the floor. No, out of all of <laughs> How does this look? Does it look good on camera? Looks really good. Fantastic. Don't forget to pick up a loaf of potato bread, that beautiful yellow stuff that makes the best bread pudding in the world if you don't drop it on the floor, but it's absolutely fantastic. If you don't want to try our recipe, use your recipe, but use potato bread. But we hope you use this recipe, do everything but drop it on the floor, make that sauce. It's a quick and easy sauce, and is this the best bouncy bread pudding? <laughs> that you've ever ate? Sheila's shaking her head over there. If it ain't, it ought to be. This is Steve Hall in Nashville, Tennessee saying I hope you subscribe to our channel. Things don't always go perfect and this is an example but it's so, so delicious. You gotta try it.
And of course, we'll have our little shotgun red face pop up over here in a second. You can click on that to subscribe. We'll put another recipe over here. Maybe we'll do the fancy French toast or something that we did earlier. And man, I'll tell you what, we just hope you subscribe to our channel. And I'm still a little shook up from dropping on the floor. I take back half of the words I said in the kitchen a little while ago. I didn't mean to do that, but I was just like, oh my goodness gracious. And I looked down and it was still all in the pan. We had to straighten it to kind of get it into place, but it was worth it because it tastes great. See you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. And Sheila is still laughing at me. Hey, it made it back in the pan. It's not all that bad.